But this, uh, the term conspiracy theory, theorist, theories, uh, is something that exists to this day. And it's used to undermine the credibility in the public eye of journalists, of political leaders perhaps, of academics. All of these, journalists and academics in particular are intellectual workers, and so their credibility is at stake if or when, or if there's even a threat of this term being used. So I think it's a very powerful type of kind of disciplinary apparatus that is wielded upon uh, opinion leaders in, in the U.S. And I think it's very effective. Um, it certain, and it certainly was used uh, against me, and I think that I was uh, likely an example um, since it was used so prevalently. Well, I got a telephone call from a reporter at the South Florida Sun Sentinel in early January of 2013. His name was Michael Clary. He was a general assignment reporter, I'm pretty sure. And he wanted me to, um, he wanted to discuss the fact that I was teaching a class called Culture of Conspiracy and the fact that I was uh, writing about the Sandy Hook Elementary School massacre on my personal blog, I believe. And um, he wanted to, I think, draw me out. I was more than open. I had nothing to hide. I think that we talked for probably, initially for probably about an hour or so. And he told me that I was being investigated by university officials and might be subject to discipline because of my personal blog. And I think that that gave me kind of a motivation to get ahead of that. And I, that may very well be what the part of their technique was. Oh, well, if he thinks that, he'll definitely want to talk to us. We'll be kind of like the good cop, you know? And so I was very open. I said, yeah, I, th these things are, are objects of study and discussion in my classes, things like uh, JFK assassination and the Oklahoma City bombing. You know, I've, I've shown documentaries involving these to, cult to, to create discussion uh, and, uh, and debate about, uh, with students. After all, this is, I think, what students want when they go to, the, when they go to university. They want to have a variety of perspectives. And uh, so he, um, he wanted for me, ultimately, this Sun Sentinel uh, reporter, I believe, wanted for me to state on the record that there were crisis actors at Sandy Hook. And I said, look, at, I've never discussed Sandy Hook in class. Uh, it, it's, it's nothing I've brought up because there's, there's no scholarly research on it. And um, I would certainly not teach my blog in class, and I never did. I never brought it up or anything. But um, they, he, he, he wanted for me to, um, to state, yes, there were crisis actors. That, this was, he, he called me up, and I was speaking to him out here on, on this patio. Uh, and I recall him calling me up and saying, wanting, he, he was, I think uh, cajoling me in many ways to, uh, to state that, yes, there were crisis actors at Sandy Hook. I said, I don't know. I'm not, I, said, I said that's a possibility, but I have no idea. Uh, I know that the Department of Homeland Security does contract with uh, cr crisis actors, uh, for example, vision box uh, actors out in Colorado. But I don't know if that's the case, and I would never go on the record uh, stating such. They wanted to conflate my profession with the personal blog and pressure the university to uh, terminate me or to get me to shut up, to get me to be quiet. Uh, you know, the major newspaper up in Connecticut is the Hartford Courant. Its sister paper is the Sun Sentinel down here. They're owned by the same company. So I definitely think that there's a correlation there.